Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. In this second part of the three-part series of transitioning to Houdini from cinema, we're gonna look at MoGraphy type of stuff. So if you rely a lot on MoGraph for your common workflow, then this is the video for you. I'm gonna break down how you do cloners, shader effectors, and random effectors, and other kind of things. So let's jump right in. So basically the way you duplicate things in Houdini, you can do it in two ways. And I'll show the first one first. So let's start with dropping down a box. And we now have a box of a meter by a meter, which might be a bit big. So let's set it to 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters. And the first way you can copy things is with and transform them. And here you just set your translate values and you can say how many copies you want. And let's zoom out a bit. And you can just set your rotation. And that's kind of it. A very straightforward note. And you can output the number of copy in your attributes. You can then later use that to color all your different cubes. And you have to say it needs to go to the sixth. So, you know, so here you can see you have a little kind of color variation, but it's fairly basic in the way it works. So the second way you do it, which is the most common way, is you duplicate your objects onto a point cloud. So if we lay down a grid, you can see we have all these points on the grid. It might be a bit big, so maybe let's scale it down a bit. Let's set it to five meters. And if we enable the point display and we highlight a grid, we can see we have all these points. So if we now append a copy to points node, we can see it, Houdini gives you hints basically on the top. So here it says which geometry do you want to copy, which is our box, and which target points do you want to copy, to, which is our grid. And now you can see, let's disable the points, but now you can see we have all our cubes, you know, <laughs> copy to our point. And that's about it in the basics, but obviously there's more to come. So if we split down our pane view again with alt right bracket, then in our geometry spreadsheet. So let's go to inspectors, geometry spreadsheet. And basically the way you work in Houdini is by setting attributes on your grid points and that gets taken on by the geometry that gets copied. So let's try first with color and append a color node, set it to point, which is the standard, but <laughs> make sure it's on point because that's where we copy to. And now it's white, so we don't see a change. Let's set it to another color. And you can see, let's disable the grid. You can see our points get different colors because we set a different color attribute here. So that attribute gets taken over and we can set it to random. And now we get all random colors and you can pick this up in Redshift as well when you start rendering. But obviously we want to do a bit more than color. So if we want to make our points a bit more random, now they're all on this perfect grid, which looks it could be a look you're going for but it might look a bit weird then what you can do is you can randomize that attribute and our attribute is p obviously so there's a couple of ways to um, randomize attributes the first one is with an attribute randomize so if you're looking for things in houdini you can also just use the first letter of the word and just type that so r air will get attribute randomize so let's drop that down and let's pipe it in here. And now it's randomizing the CD. So if we disable this node by hitting the most left button, and if you see it again, now our CD is getting randomized and we get random values. But we don't want the CD value. Remember, we want P, our point position, to be randomized. And now you can see we get all these cubes in this weird position here. And that's this because we set the value to random, but obviously we want to add it so if we template our points here, you can see this is quite an aggressive randomization. So we can turn, turn down the scale a bit and then you can see what's happening. And what you can do as well is you can set your values here, your min and max value, and minimum displacement, maximum displacement in all different axes. So if you just want them to displace on the Y axis, that you can do that as well by disabling your X and Z. You can ignore the last one, that's just in case you use four dimensions, but we need three dimensions for our P because we have X, Y, and Z. We don't have a four value. But in case you ever work with rotations and quaternions, which we're probably gonna dive in later, then it's important that you have four values. And then you can just bump up the scale 
and you can just displace it in one axis. So that's one way to randomize attributes. And another way is by adding attribute noise, which does the same thing. It just uses noise algorithms instead of a randomize function to drive the randomness. So you can see this, the attribute randomize as a random effector, and you can see the attribute noise as a shader effector with a Cinema 4D noise put into the shader. So we now randomized CD values again. And if we want to see what really happens, we can uh, get more rows and columns into our grid. So maybe let's have 50 by 50. And now we have this perfect grid. And you can already see what's happening. These are like noise patterns that get mapped onto our geometry now. And you can reduce the element size. So you see, we get smaller noise, we can get bigger noises. And the amplitude is not going to be that great for color values because you're going to want to limit them to one in the max anyway. But that is just something you can look into. And an important value which you can set is where you want to range it from. So if we now swap it for CD values, positive works really well because it maps values from zero to one. But if we want to map our P value, you have one have it zero centered. So it goes between minus five and five. And I'll show you why now when we map it to p so see if we up the amplitude you can see everything just goes in kind of in a direction where if you have it zero centered it kind of goes around the middle so it's it's just a nicer form of displacing objects and you can set different noise patterns in here you can offset it there is a animation function which is water quick and we can disable the pulse duration maybe that will make it no we need to increase the pulse duration maybe that will make it better yeah, it's a bit better i would say maybe the noise type doesn't really allow for nice movement but anyway the important thing to remember is all we're doing is we're just changing our attributes in our geometry spreadsheet on the points so we've done color we've done the point position and another important thing, which is slightly different in Houdini, is the upward position for objects. So if we make our box smaller in the x-axis, whoops, not that much. And maybe in the y as well, no. And here you can see, actually, the z-axis should be from left to right on this axis. You can see it in the left-hand corner, there's a z one. So you can see our boxes are not getting duplicated in the right way. So therefore, you change the normal positions. So if you just want them pointing in one direction, you can have an attribute create value. So instead of randomizing things, you just say, this is, this is what it is. <laughs> this is the value I want. And the value we're looking for is the n for the normals. And it's a vector, so we need three values. And, and basically, the thing Houdini uses the normal positions for the directions of the copies. So if we set a value and then we visualize our normals, you can see now they all point up and we visualize the normals by hitting the point normal display, visualizer. And the thing is they don't point in the exact right direction and that's because we need an up vector. But I'll show you a different way to orient things later as well. But this is kind of the easiest way. And then what a lot of people do is they just transform their object beforehand on the X. And now you get all your clones nicely pointed up. And after you set it as well, you can also randomize it a little bit. So you can just say, randomize the end value and then add the value. And we want three and the min and max are fine like this. And then we can just turn down the global scale a bit. So if you want them have a bit of randomness, you can do that and probably a better way to do this is with noises. But just so you know, you can just add to it. And then the last important attribute we have in Houdini is the attribute P skill stands for point skill, I think, or particle skill. I honestly don't know. Points and particles work somewhat similar in Houdini. But let's go to attribute noise. Let's append it and set it to P skill. And one important thing to realize is p-scale is a float value because it's one dimension, it just sets the scale. It doesn't set the scale along all the axes. That's a scale value. And here you can see quite well what's happening with a noise. So we can 
scale it up a bit, we can turn it down, we can do all these different kind of things with it. And that's just another important parameter to know. So we have CD for color, let's add that here. So we have them all lined up. So CD for, we have our normal for our normal attribute. We have our CD for color. We have our P scale for our point scale. And those are the main values that we can use. And we have the attribute create, the attribute randomize, and the attribute noise. And that's how we animate things in Houdini. You can go deeper, you can do these things with code by appending a point wrangle. And for example, instead of using the attribute noise here, you can say float attribute P scale is random and use the point number as a seed and close with a semicolon. And it's the same thing. We randomize it. You can do it in a point vop as well, which is kind of like Expresso. And we can dive in. And here we have some default values like P, V for velocity, force, color, and normals. But we want to export the P scale. So how we do that is with a bind export node. So it just exports an attribute. That's all it does. We can set it to P scale and we can add a noise. Maybe a, let's just add a curl noise. We need to hook up the position. So that's P into the position. And that noise we can just add to the P scale. And now you can see we have random value. And again, it's the same thing. We're just <laughs> randomizing attributes in our spreadsheet. And those are just a couple of ways in order to get MoGraphy type of things. The last thing I want to dive into is orientations. So orientations are quite difficult because they work with quaternions, which are a bit too big for the scope of this video. But if you hit an attribute randomize, you can set it to orient, set it to four dimensions. And now you can see we get some really nice randomness. What you can do with this as well is you can set it to a custom ramp. So for example, if you want them only to rotate at specific positions, you can do that. And you can just set these values to a constant. And now you can see we got some linear kind of movements. So you can just add some values here. So maybe at 25, we can add a value of 0.25. And now you can see we get some really nice geometric kind of randomness. If you would like me to talk about orientation a bit more, please leave a comment down below and I can record a video about it because it's, it's a bit more of a complicated topic, but for now, just accept it's four values. Play with randomness in the attribute randomize and you should be good to go. And that's kind of all there is to it. It's actually not that difficult. If I missed anything you normally do in a kind of cloner setup, please let me know in the comments and I can add to it. And in the next one, we're gonna look at fields. So we can look how we can animate these things in and out and create kind of like a full animation for it. So if you're not subscribed yet, then please subscribe and enable notifications. So when I release the video, you'll get a notification for it and I'll see you in the next one.